All right, we're going to have another musical interlude from David Robix. We have been church on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, music, music isn't just for church. Actually, me, music and social movements have been uh, working together forever. What are you uh, Yeah. And uh, the, uh, sir, this, I'll do a little song about the war that Scott's uncle fought in. And, um, and I, the, the mention of Garland mentioning uh, Paul Robeson. It's, uh, I'm a huge fan of Paul Robeson. He was mm -hmm. also not only a, a, a elite athlete of, and, and a singer, uh, but also a, a linguist and spoke Russian and many other languages. And um, one thing that we don't have in common is um, I was never, they never took away my U.S. passport. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the, um, uh, I was barred from entering Canada for a year. Um, coincidentally, when I was going up there to do a gig at a Palestinian community center, might not have anything to do with being barred for the year, but who knows. But then uh, the folks in Blaine uh, on the border there in Washington, D.C., they, they organized a gig in the same park uh, that uh, they organized a gig decades earlier for Paul Robeson when he wasn't able to leave the U.S. They, he played for the Canadians um, in just about the only place he could have done the concert for Canadians, which was on that in that park uh, where you can both you don't need a, v, a passport to, to go onto that park. So if you're not allowed to enter the other country, that's one place. Uh, this little area you can fit a few thousand people there too. But um, this is a song from um, about a friend of mine's grandmother. Katarina Yakov, long before she took that name, was organizing workers in Hamburg just the same. Organizing beneath a flag of deepest red, a new dawn of peace and freedom clearly shining in her head. Katarina Yakov first was sent to jail. When the trappings of democracy all began to fail, she was frequently arrested in and out of custody while her first husband was in hiding from the Nazis. Katarina Jakob was acquitted of a crime, but the Gestapo had the last word. They weren't finished with her this time. She was sent to Ravensbrück, a killing hunger at her side. She heard of the execution, how her second husband died. For Katarina Jakob, the end was close at hand. She was on the death march with a ragged starving band. Marching through a forest, being led by the SS. What would happen hours later seemed impossible to guess. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May, and they all sang the Internationale. They all sang the Internationale. Katarina Jakob thought about her children and the friends and comrades taking care of them. Not knowing yet if any of them survived, not knowing that soon she'd see her daughters both alive. Katarina Jakob watched the German soldiers flee, streaming from the east, that's what she was seeing. Allied bombers flew above them, she thought they all might die, and then soon there was the silence of all the SS men. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May, and they all sang the Internationale. They all sang the Internationale. Katarina Yakov saw red flags flapping in the breeze above the Russian tanks, and she fell upon her knees, and so many different voices in so many different tongues sang the most beautiful song that could ever have been sung. In German, Lithuanian, in Polish and in Dutch, 
A myriad of melodies has never had been such in Russian and in Yiddish. Italian and French emerge from the forest beneath the trench. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May, and they all sang the Internationale. When the sun rose the next morning, it was the first of May, and they all sang the Internationale. They all sang the Internationale. Verkert, die Signale auf zum besten Effekt. Die Internationale erkennt das Menschen recht. Verkert, die Signale auf zum besten Effekt. Die Internationale erkennt das Menschen recht. Didn't know David was gonna play that. That's an old favorite of mine. So, wow, that's great. Well, our next speaker uh, is uh, uh, Syed Hosseini. And Syed is a very well-known commentator in the Farsi language. Um, he gives analysis of the Middle East, world events, as well as US politics in both English and in Farsi. And he has been speaking up very loudly in support of the Palestinians. He also does a lot of work debunking uh, the mythology because I've been to Iran a number of times and what they tell us about Iran on American television and what Iran is really like uh, is, is night and day. So we're really honored that he came all the way from California to give us a presentation. Thank you for being here and come on up and give us some words, Syed. Oh, what a great day. I decided to come to Portland by train. Five hours delay, 20 hours in total. <laughs> yeah. And, but, but the view was great though, it was it worth it. Um, I'm glad to be here and to be by you fine people and the greatest speakers and I'm glad to Scott today, first time, I'm a big fan. Um, all the speakers talked about Palestine and what ha what's happening right now. I want to touch on two subjects today and one is about Iran and then about Palestine and what's going on. First of all, as Caleb said, what you hear about Iran on the media has nothing to do with what is actually going on in Iran. If you want to know about the history of it, so in 1979 the revolution happened, right? And the leader of that revolution, Ayatollah Khomeini, is not only, was not only anti the dictator at that time, anti the Pala uh, regime, but he was actually anti-imperialism. That was the whole reason. His priority was like, first he wanted to fight against imperialism, and back in 50s, he tried even to talk Shah, to talk him out of imperialism, but he didn't listen. And then in the 70s, late 70s, nothing was solution but revolution. And that revolution happened by the people. And when I say by the people, it's literally by the people. Because when the revolution happened, and when they won basically the revolution, there was a voting session and over 90% of people voted for Islamic Republic. So I don't, I don't hear revolution and then referendum about like picking and choosing what government you want, right? We had revolution all over the world. Usually the people that are in power, they decide what type of government they want. But what happened in Iran? The people decided what type of government they want. And that was the beginning of what they wanted. And they wanted independence and freedom. They wanted to have a country that don't want to involve in wars don't want to be part of the genocide that we see today, right? But as a result of that decision, 
in the last 40 years, 40 plus years, there has been crazy sanction against the people of Iran and against the government in Iran. And I travel to Iran a lot, and I go there and I see it, I talk to people. When they know that I live in America, they respect me twice. Because people in Iran, they love Americans. They have great respect for Americans. They have no problem with Americans. Even the government, they have no problem with, uh, with Americans. They do have problem with the government, though. And they have every right to have the problem yeah. with government. And one of the things I am advocating of is critical thinking. And to me, how I define critical thinking is that right now, in today's world, we receive massive of information, right? And we don't have time to double check, to fact check them, right? So it's really important. To me, how I define critical thinking is that once we receive information from everybody, we heard a lot from Scott, we heard a lot from Kayla, we, we hear a lot from news. We don't have to be agree with everything, right? Mm -hmm. But what critical thinking means that whatever I receive, I will have at the end of the day, the result of my thought is only my words and my thoughts. Not because someone told me to think this way, to think that way. That's how media is working right now. That's why they bring analysis on media, the news. They don't just report, they tell you how to think and why you have to th think in certain ways. That's why you hear a lot of crazy things about Iran. And even I believe that, I'm sure you heard about the protest that was going on last year in Iran, right? Revolution is happening in Iran. And they were saying that the airport are, are shutting down and, and uh, the revolution is happening. So I decided, even as a person that lived in Iran and <laughs> is traveling to Iran, I was like, I want to see it before my eyes, right? I don't want to believe yeah. the media. So I traveled in the middle of the whole thing that they were called revolution. And I went to the three biggest city in Iran. And I was looking for protests. And I couldn't find one. I'm not saying there wasn't protest. Of course, there was protest. And I mean, Iran is a country with 90 million people, right? It's a big country. So there were definitely protests. But how the media was showing is that it's like, let's imagine we have three cameras here, one there, one here, and one the other side. And they're, they're, they're recording us from different angles. And they're showing the same video, the same different time, <laughs> saying that this happened in Chicago, this happened in California, and that one happened in, in Portland, right? Yeah. But they all happen here. Yeah. That's how, how, wh how the media was portraying, how, how showing that the revolution is happening or, or whatever. But there was, there was no revolution. And People were pissed off at some of those protesters because it's not just protesting. They were destroying public uh, transportation. They, they, they burned up ambulances and police cars and they killed, they burned police officers alive. Ooh. It's crazy. And I don't know if you have seen those videos or even if, if those videos are allowed to, to be seen in the United States, but I have, I've seen them. I've seen the guy, they captured him, and they slaughtered that guy, 22 years old guy. So those are the things that you never hear, but that was the revolution that was happening. And thank God that they were stopped. So that's why it's important to, to, to know how to receive data and how to analyze them and how to think. Other, otherwise, we will be brainwashed. And the, th and, and the problem is that in the United States, a lot of people might say, you know what, it's not my fight, right? I don't care. But the reality is that it doesn't matter if you take action or you just be passive. Things are changing and your life is changing too. So it's better you take action too. Because if you say that you're not, you're, you're not a politician, everybody is a politician. You just don't know it. Everybody is a politician. So what's happening on October 7, right? And the reason I talked about Iran is that when October 7 happened, a lot of articles were out that Iran was behind the whole October 7, right? Which is a big lie. Iran authority, from the, the supreme leader to other authorities, they said that they had nothing to do with it. And the reason they said they had nothing to do with it it wasn't because they didn't want to say, oh, we, we're lying or whatever. Iran, in the last 40 years, they always supported Palestine. Mm -hmm. It's the 
the biggest country and the nation that supports support Palestine from different time in the last 40, 40 years, right? So why they are saying they're, they, they had nothing to do with it? Because they had nothing to do with it. It was just a purely Palestinian thing to do. And as, as Scott said it, a lot of people say, oh, October 7, October 7. For people like me, for brown people like me, from people, people in the Middle East, people that follow news, people that read his, uh, uh, history, it's not October 7. Imagine there is an ongoing reality TV show, right? And that reality TV show has 75 episodes. And for some reason, you just start watching from the 75 episode, right? You haven't watched the rest of the episode. And you're like, oh my god, these people are killing and doing all these things. I'm like, have you watched the 74 episodes? <laughs> That's what's going on in the last 75 years in Palestine. So if you look at what's going on in Palestine from October 7, you will see, oh, Hamas and Palestinian did an action and attacked Israel. But the way I see it, and the way that everybody should see it, it wasn't an action, it was a reaction. An action means that killing people for the last 75 years, committing genocide over and over, not caring about the, the international laws, not caring about any type of laws, not caring about morality, not caring about nothing. That's what Israeli is doing, right? That's what action is. What Palestinians are doing is reaction. And if you know about Gaza, Gaza is, again, it's, it's two million people that over about 45% are children. And those children used to have dad, used to have mom, right? And used to have parents. And they're like, oh, you know, like they're, Hamas is using those children as, as, as a sh human shield. And I'm like, imagine if you, are a father or a mother and you have been killed by the bombs and as, as the children and you're a teenager and you saw the death of your parents before your eyes, right? Yeah. Can you even talk to that kid about peace, yeah. about like to a state or about any type of solution other than fighting for, for, for your existence? You can't talk to, to, to that type of people. Because you've never been to, in, in their spot, right? In their shoe. And it's really hard to be in their shoe, seeing all your relatives dying before your eyes. And if you're alive, you might die tomorrow. In Sacramento, one night I heard this crazy sound. It was like a, it was like a bomb, but it wasn't a bomb. Or I think it was something to do with Halloween. But all of a sudden, I was like, where's my gun? <laughs> like, you know? And I was like, well, nothing gonna happen, you know? But then I was thinking about Palestinian people. Every day, when you sleep, you don't know that you're gonna wake up the next day. And people in Iraq, people in Afghanistan, people in Syria, people, people in a lot of different countries have experienced that. And they know how it feels, they know how, how, how it actually means when when the bombs are coming. Another thing that um, I wanted to mention is, is actually about the lies that are going on, on, on media. So when the October 7 happened, we said that it was reaction of the, of the Palestinian people and it was defending their rights, their existence. And the whole argument about this land belongs to this, this land belongs to that is, is purely bullshit. I mean, we have, we have, we have empire, uh, like Iran itself, right? Back in history, they, they controlled part of the world. Can they now claim that, oh, I want to take this country because someday in, back in like a thousand years, it belonged to us? Isn't it stupid? That's the same thing, the idea of like the holy land and this is ours. It, it, it's, it all goes back to the same idea. So even if I accept, even if I don't argue against the people that are saying that, oh, this is this our land, I'm like, okay, this, is your, this was your land, right? Mm -hmm. But for decades, for centuries, Palestinians lived there. So you can't just jump in there and you're like, okay, now it's mine, just get out. Yeah. Preach! <laughs> Thank you.
And, Another thing that you even hear from our politician here is that, oh, I know, I know, like, when war happens, there are normal people going to die, innocent people going to die. I get it. War is bad. But when it happens, normal people die, innocent people die. And they call it casualties, right? Yeah. But what doesn't make sense is the numbers. If you're killing 10 people, 10 members of Hamas, versus 10,000 innocent people, that's not casualties. That's purely genocide. Yes. Yes. That is genocide. Yes. So the idea of like this is, this is just casualty. No, this is not casualty. Casualty means like, I mean, it, I mean that's the definition of casualty. It shouldn't be the main thing. Like if I, if I go to a restaurant, if I have a fight with a guy, and I start shooting everybody in the restaurant, and if somebody asks me, why did you do that? I'm like, that's just a casualty. I wanted to shoot that guy, but I mean, it happened that the rest of the people in the, in the restaurant to be there. That's what's happening, right? Yeah. They're bombing every place. And today when I was coming here, I, I read the, uh, the news about uh, the hospital and Nash Hospital. They, uh, they, they cleaned up hospital on, 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 uh, on October 10th, I believe. And right now, the NBC and there are some Emirate News, they could go inside. And it's all babies in ICUs, dead bodies for days and weeks. And now, now the footage are, are out there, actually. So even the, the journalists that, that didn't really want to talk about it, now they're also talking against it as well. I want to finish up because a lot of, of most of the, the speakers pointed out all these great things. But I want to tell you this. What's happening here, what you're doing, actually, is, is a great thing. And don't look at it as even uh, a lot of speakers said it's the right time. I'm saying even if it's not the right time, you should do it. Yeah. And the reason I say that, when Ayatollah Khomeini was, was going for a revolution, everybody used to make fun of him, even other religious people. Like, revolution against the, the Pahlavi regime? Like, are you joking? But he, he did it. And in 1979, when revolution happened, a lot of leaders, they, they, they say this, they couldn't believe that that happened. Even the same year that the revolution happened, the leaders that were running the revolution said we couldn't believe it. We saw it like maybe the next decades, 20 years. So it's happening the same thing here. You, might, you may say like, okay, I'm, I'm coming like, I, I know like a lot of even the CPI members coming from different states, right? And you should be proud of yourself. And you should just keep doing it and keep going because you never know when it happens. But when it happens, you will be glad that you're part of it. Thank you. Uh, that was a, a great presentation.